Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be discussing six ways that you might be ruining your sleep without really knowing it. Now if you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you're reminded of my new videos each week. So here we are week three of our sleep month and this is all about things that we tend to do that can interfere with our sleep. Number one is a large meal at night, especially if you have it quite late on. Any time you are digesting food, it takes a lot of energy. Your digestive system revs up and all these processes go on which take a lot of energy. And that energy can affect you falling asleep. So it's a good idea to have a lighter meal in the evening and to try and have it that little bit earlier if you can. Some women find that swapping meals round can help them a little bit more. So you could have a bigger meal at lunchtime and just that little bit of a lighter meal during the evening as well. The other thing that happens here is if you, you're eating a lot at night, is that your liver is involved with part of the digestive process. And we know that if the liver revs up too much, it will wake you up very quickly between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. I've done a video blog on the liver, so if you're interested in this aspect, then um, certainly click on and have a little look at that one. It is very interesting. So have a smaller meal in the evening and that can sometimes make a lot of difference to how you fall asleep and also the quality of your sleep too. Number two is alcohol. Well, we like a nice nightcap, don't we? And it is said that alcohol will help you get to sleep. And yes, it does. The problem is that if you drink too much, then you end up going into a very deep sleep but you don't get a restful sleep. And from that deep sleep, again, you can wake up very, very quickly and you can't get off to sleep. And here again, if you've had too much alcohol, the liver will be involved and that would be another reason, especially if you're waking up between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. And I know from personal experience that if I have a little bit too much to drink, then I usually end up waking up about half two in the morning and I will not get back to sleep until about half three and it's just impossible. If you're in liver mode, you really can't get back off to sleep until your, your liver calms down. So what to do here? It is better not to drink alcohol at night if you can. If not, then just try and pace it a little bit more just to give your liver a little bit of a rest. They do say that it takes the liver about one hour to process one unit of alcohol. The other thing with alcohol too is that it will dehydrate you and we know that dehydration at night can be a big factor in triggering night sweats. So this is one where again the alcohol might be very pleasant but it can cause quite a few problems um, during the night as well. If you're having problems getting off to sleep instead of a nightcap why don't you try our Dormiazan instead. Number three, caffeine and smoking. Both of these will rev up your nervous system and it will be much more difficult to unwind as you are trying to get to sleep. We also know that caffeine and nicotine will trigger night sweats and hot flushes as well. So again, this is another little bad habit, if you like, that can cause a lot of problems during the night. Did you know that it takes your liver about eight hours to process one cup of coffee? So sometimes that late afternoon cup of coffee will be affecting your sleep as well. And the number of women who've told me that they've cut out their after dinner cup of coffee or tea, and it's made a huge difference to their sleeping pattern. So this is one that's certainly worth um, trying out. You can look at calming drinks in, in the evening, things like chamomile tea, lemon balm tea, and there's plenty of lots of lovely combinations of herb teas that you can get to aid sleep. So definitely next time you're in your health food shop, have a look at that particular section and there will be a really great choice for you. 
You can also look at our relaxation essence. This is a nice one just to help to calm the mind down and to help you fall off to sleep that little bit more easily. Number four, is your room too hot or too cold? Your body temperature lowers as you are trying to get off to sleep. And if your room is too hot, then that is going to interfere with you dropping off to sleep as well. So your room temperature really needs to be around about 16 to 18 degrees for a better night's sleep. The other thing that can happen is that flushes and sweats are more likely if you are too warm. And unfortunately with things like um, duvets, especially the man-made ones, they very often don't let you breathe very well. And some of these um, um, mattresses as well, the memory foam mattresses, they don't allow your body to breathe. And between them, if you're sandwiched between both of them, it can really raise your, your body temperature. So make sure that you get plenty of air around the body during the night, maybe look at making sure you've got cotton sheets and um, some kind of natural filling for your, your duvet. Wear cotton pyjamas or, or a nightie, and I know some women tell me that they find that they have a better night's sleep wearing absolutely nothing. So that's something else that you could maybe have a little experiment with too. Now, leave the window open as well if, if you can, because sometimes stale air will be a, a, a factor too, and breathing in some nice fresh air at night also helps the, the body generally. If you do wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep, if you're lying there very often, it will be all these thoughts will be going round in your head. Did you remember to do something or have you forgotten to do something? And you start making up lists um, in your head that will stop you getting off to sleep. If you find that a toilet run has stopped you getting back to sleep or you've had a, a night sweat and maybe you've had to get up and, and cool off a little bit and then you're finding it really hard to, to drop off. If you're really tossing and turning, sometimes it's better to get up for a little while. It's almost like you're resetting your, your body. You're getting out of that habit of just lying there and, and thinking and, and tossing and turning. And some women do find getting up, don't switch the lights on because then that wakes your, your whole brain up. But maybe sit with it with a very um, dim light or, or something like that. Do a little bit of light reading, um, you could do something like writing in your journal. Some women find that that mid-evening or, or midnight getting up and, and doing something creative can be very, very restful. The only thing I would say here is don't get up in the middle of the night and then start doing housework because that is not going to help you get back off to sleep. Sometimes, again, for some women, it's because they've been dehydrated, so a little calming drink of, of chamomile or I, if I wake up in the middle of the night I sometimes find a nice cup of Rui Bosch tea can just help to break that cycle and then I get back into bed and, and I can drop off quite um, quite easily. You can look at if you're being woken up by the uh, night switch you can look at the sage tablets um, and again if, if it's the liver angle if it's waking you up between 1 and 3 a.m. you could look at taking milk thistle um, in the evening before you go to bed. Right, number six is exercise. Is exercise revving you up or are, are you doing it too near bedtime? Because again, if you're doing a lot of exercise, it's revving up your nervous system, it's raising your body temperature, and these things will stop you relaxing. So if you're one of these people that likes to do the exercise at night, allow at least two to three hours after your exercise before you're ready to go to bed just to help your body to to wind down a little bit as well those are the six main ones but there are a few other little ones that can be a big factor in poor sleep as well mobile phones tvs in the bedroom they should be banned apart from the fact that, that you know that they're keeping you wide awake the blue light actually hinders your body's ability or your brain's ability to start winding down. So these really should be avoided if at all possible. Pets in the bedroom, it's amazing how many people say that their, their dog or, the, or their cat is lying on the bottom of the bed. That can interrupt your sleep um, as well. So they're best kept to, to, their own, to their own beds. 
an untidy bedroom. This is all to do with, with things like feng shui, where the energy of the room can be disrupted if you have too much clutter um, going on. Are you working in the evening? Are you paying bills? Are you, are you working on, on the computer? Are you doing anything that's keeping your brain really active? Again, give yourself plenty of time just to calm down. And the other thing is exciting or scary films and books. Because these, again, if, if you're watching an, a, an action thriller or a really scary movie, your nervous system will be on its edge. And again, that will take a little while to get you back to sleep. And I know I have to watch, I like reading in the evening, and I know I have to watch what kind of books I read at night, because if I end up with a thriller, then that's my nighttime put back for, for quite a while because it just takes so long to calm down. So hopefully these tips have helped you. If none of these really apply to you, have a look at what you're doing in the evening and in the run up to the evening, because there may be something that you've got into the habit of that, that's affecting your sleep as well. Next week, I'm going to be talking about good foods that help to calm you down and to help you sleep. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye.